Hi guys, and welcome to Reality with T. So we are now at number two on the assholosity scale for the week, for this week of 90 Day Fiance. And guess who gets that spot? Michael from Mike and Natalie over in Sequoia in Washington, okay? So remember, you know, he then just broke off the wedding, the morning of the wedding. Natalie is completely hysterical, freaking out, can't get herself together. She, he's not even man enough to take her to the airport, make sure he sees her off safely. Remember, he was going to marry her. All of a sudden, you know, he can't even take her to the airport. So his neighbor is going to take her to the airport. What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to stay in Seattle because I guess that's where the international airport is, the closest one. Stay in Seattle for the night. She wake up early, head to her flight. So um, Natalie's freaking out still. She's in the car crying because she's scared of coronavirus. Remember, this is probably the beginning of when the pandemic hit and we really knew nothing about it. We damn near thought it was airborne. I know I did. I didn't believe the government. So she's scared. She's worried, upset that he even put her in this position. She has to fly, fly to France. Remember, she lives in the Ukraine. She has to fly to France because... That was the closest fight she can get. I think the U Ukrainian borders are closed for flights or something like that. So when she gets to France, I guess she figures I'm in Europe and I'm going to find another way to get home, whether it be by train, bus, maybe another flight, whatever it is. She doesn't even know, which is the messed up part, right? So they're in the car driving to Seattle. I don't know how far it is, but let's say 45 minutes or something like that. Uh, Tamara realizes that she needs Michael's credit card because he paid for the hotel on his credit card. So she has to go all the way back to Mike to get the credit card. That just didn't make any sense to me because I feel like I have maybe booked a hotel room. Sometimes you don't have to pay for it on the spot, but the person that goes can pay for it with a different card. You know, they're, you're just kind of, you're reserving the room. They can pay for it when they get there. And really, you can pay for it. Or if you if it's already paid for, you're just swiping your card so that they can retain a certain fee, $150, $200 in case you decide to wreck the room for whatever reason. Or Mike could have just put in their name as the person who's going to check in. Whatever it is, they needed his card, right? And then sitting out figuring, like, I'm like, why is it that nobody here... Why can't either of them pay for a damn hotel room for the night? You stay at a Comfort Inn for like 130, 150 or something like that. Like, y'all don't have any money. Tamara, you have no money. Natalie, you really in a whole different country with absolutely no money. I would never do that. Even if I go to a family member's house in a different state, I always have money in case they decide to get crazy, get bucked. What if they what if they start pulling out, I don't know, something crazy, some some cocaine or something like that and I don't want to be around then I can check myself into a hotel at any time I always have money to stay to, to put a roof over my head I'm playing those games so they go back and you see Natalie uh Mike is looking through Tamara the driver's side window talking over her to Natalie which is probably the most uncomfortable thing for Tamara ever and he's asking for his ring back he asked several times and several times Natalie said no as she rightfully should have and you know she's like no I suffered for this ring this is my ring you're not getting it back you put me through too much for this ring and quiet as it's kept and uh that's from Funky Zani but quiet as it's kept she probably Shoot, that ring is insurance. You sending me to France, which is a whole different country than to what I'm going to. I don't have any money to stay in a hotel over here. So maybe I'm going to need this ring. Maybe I'm going to need to pawn it or sell it so I can get my butt home to the Ukraine. Because I don't know how I'm going to get there safely. And you damn sure didn't give me no extra money. You know what I mean? You didn't do like Stephanie and make sure I had money for snacks. You just throwing me on a plane. Not even to my home. So she says no. And he says, so what are you just going to sell it? And she, it, first of all, it don't matter what she does with it. It don't matter if she throw it down the damn drain. You, she went through all of this to get this ring back. I think she knows better never to give you the ring back because <laughs> you would never get it back. After this, she would never see it again. Um, So that is her ring. And then you gave it to her only one night ago, fully intending for her to have it and, and own it. I'm not giving it back. Especially, no, that's my assurance. When I get over to France, people might be acting shady. I might need this money. Get out of here. If, if it's worth anything. He's acting like it's worth his, his whole half of his damn house, whatever. So... You know, then he's going to ask her if he could talk to her for a few minutes. Why? What is there to talk about? You talked to me when you said, when I woke up this morning to put on my dress and get my hair done, and you woke up and told me you didn't want to marry me. That was enough. We also have not seen his perspective on why he decided not to marry her. So we haven't seen him in the one-on-one -on -one with the producers yet. And I want to know what happened that morning. Because he's doing her real dirty. You know what I mean? So... 
You know, he asks to talk to her. She says, no, good. He asks her for a hug. She says, no, good. Why are you trying to pull her back into this whole manipulative web that you have? You told me you don't want to marry. There's no point now in us talking and us hugging. So what do you want us to hug so you feel better about yourself or breaking my heart and humiliating me in front of the, in front of the world? Um, hugging me is going to do what? Just make you feel better in the moment. But it's a manipulative act to make me feel while I'm on my way. Oh, maybe it isn't that bad. I know he doesn't want to get married, but maybe there is a chance for us. Like, I'm glad that Natalie is standing her ground, at least in this moment, to say, no, I don't want any parts of this, right? Um, he asked for the, he keeps asking for the ring back, even after she declines the hug and the talk. So I'm like, damn, this guy is really heartless. Like, he's really callous and cold. I mean, like, it's no, you don't, you're not, he's not taking from, he's not looking at the emotions. He's not looking at her disposition. Like, she's really, was like, it's like hysterical, like, She's really going through it. He's not checking and see, listen, I just want to make sure you're all right. I know what I did was really messed up, but I just want to make sure to ensure that you're all right. You know what I mean? Like, he's just fucked up. He's a, he's a bad, he's just not a good individual. And, you know, we all had our issues with Natalie, but nobody deserves to be treated like this. And he, he just, she's treating her now like he just discard her, you know, like a piece of trash. So basically they leave. And then we see for the next episode, of course, they have to go back to Mike again because when she gets to the hotel, they can't use his credit card. Again, this is BS. This is set up by TLC because easily they could have paid for a damn hotel one night for her to get on a plane the next day and go back. The same way that when Ed had that girl out there in Thailand, Rose, they she wanted to go home. They made sure they put her on a flight back home, but she didn't have any money either. So whatever, we'll see how this goes. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you for video number three on the Assholeosity ranking. So yeah, Mike is at number two. Who's number three? Let's see. Thank you.